blessing it is to have, to have salvation. Amen. Mm -hmm. To wake up every day saved is a blessing. Amen. amen. To go to bed at night mm -hmm. saved, amen, is a blessing. Amen. amen. So you know what? Say to God, I'm going to do something a little different. I want to ask you a question this morning. What do you personally enjoy about salvation? What do you personally enjoy about salvation this morning? By show of hands. <laughs> Sister Juanita. The hope of going to heaven. Amen. The hope of going to heaven. My Lord. Someone else. Uh, deliverance. Deliverance. My Lord. Brother Boyer. I enjoy the men that I I'm enjoying who I am now, not who I used to be. Amen. 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 Yes, right here, sister in the middle. Um, I, enjoy, I enjoy the true contentment that I have. My Lord, my God. My Lord. come on. Amen. Amen. Sister Love, right here in the front. I enjoy the thought of being free in my conscience of mm. guilt. Wow. Enjoy being Free in your consciousness of guilt. My Lord, what a blessing. Sister Kim. I enjoy being fully satisfied. Amen, amen, amen. Sister Lisa, right here. Thank God you can wake up with no condemnation. Mm. My Lord, amen, my Lord. Amen. I enjoy having peace in my mind. Mm. It's a blessing. What a blessing. Enjoy it. It's a blessing and peace. Just throw it right over here in the back, Sister Pauline. Oh, I'm sorry, Sister Cynthia. Sit you right there. I enjoy having a connection with God. Yes. Let's get this. Let's get one in the back right there. Having access to the kingdom. Amen. 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 One more. One more. End this off. One more. I thank God for allowing me to be clothed in my right mind. Amen. And to love others and not just myself. Amen. Amen. Sister Ellie, you know I ain't going to leave you hanging. Go ahead. <laughs> I enjoy the presence of the Lord being able to guide me and instruct my life. Amen. Amen. Well, you know what, saints of God? I enjoyed all those things. Amen. I'm sorry. Listen, I'm sorry. We got one more. Got one more. Hold on, let me get a mic. Let's get a mic. Let's get a mic. <laughs> we can't. Let's get the. We got. Let's get a mic. Take your time. Take your time. My Lord. Yes, yes, yes. 
Yeah, let's go ahead and stand on our feet. We're about to give God a praise service. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask Sister Bessie that she, you know, when she open up our service to pray that God will pour out his spirit and bless the inspiration of this morning. Amen. My God, my God. Oh, God. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Father, bless and have your divine name this morning. Lord, I pray that you all walk in the grace of this morning. Have your way this morning, dear God. Bless the Lord. My God, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Bless your name, Lord. Father, have your way this morning. Have your way, Lord. Undertake, dear God. 
brighter days. partying and to feel good. But these last six years, I have been relying on the Lord. And although we go through our trials and tribulations, <laughs> we must still have that inner joy. Amen. Even when I'm going through, the enemy may kind of stagger me a little bit. But God, you know, there, there was a toy, I don't know if all of you remember, but it was a toy that you used to punch and it'll fall down and, and come right back. You know, it never laid down. It never laid down. I don't know what they call it, knockout or whatever, but a bobble, yeah. However, that's how I feel. I feel that although I may be going through trials and tribulations, God give me grace. to a sister a couple of times since I've been gone and she kept telling me just come back don't be ashamed just come back and if it wasn't for that news that I got this morning I wouldn't feel the strength that I have now and I know that without a doubt God is my healer Amen. and I need to be here thanks And I want to ask the saints to please, please pray uh, unspoken requests. I don't want to bring it all out, but it's a matter of life and death. And I need God to send a swift angel to work. My God. Let's go in the back, sister, window. 
I just want to thank God for touching my body. I have been experiencing some unusual pain for about maybe a week or two weeks. And I thank God that he came through. He kept me up at night. I tried to get up and go to work in the morning. So it was difficult, but I give God praise. in the turmoil and all these situations, you know. I appreciate God for that. Tell the Saints Friday had such a peace about the situation. Um, I just felt yesterday, make a call. Just, you know, call. And I called and I said, is, is he clear? Can I come see him? Is you come. You can come. So I, I, I can talk to him and find out what happened or whatever, but I appreciate God. God directs our steps, you know. It was like he gave me such a peace. I mean, the way that I had to leave last Saturday was hard, Brother Brie Love, not knowing what had taken place. You know, but God told me yesterday, make a call. I made the call, and I don't know if everything, I can say everything is all right, but I'm all right. And I ask you all to continue to pray for us. We get through this. We still have a few more years to go, but we get through this. So continue to pray for us. Yes, um, please pray for Sister Tucker. Remember Sister Tucker and Brittany. Brother Rick. You know, I just have a uh, unspoken request for my, my health. And uh, I just pray for uh, that you guys pray for me and hold me up. And, and, uh, amen. Amen. I ask the saints to continue to remember Jamari in a very special way. And I thank God that I was able to come out this morning. Um, I'd like to <clears throat> ask the saints to continue praying for my wife and her body. Uh, you know, it's a fun, not a funny thing, but it's, it hurts when, you, when your spouse or your children or someone you love dearly hurts or in pain and you see that struggle they're going through. Uh, it, 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 it starts to eat on you and weigh on you a little bit. Uh, one thing in life we have to realize we have to be patient. God does what he's going to do in his time, not in our time. So I just like that.
blessings, but thank God we're in the right place, amen. amen. All right, brother, upper lifting of your hands. God sees, knows. I'm going to ask you to please kneel at your seats. We do have an altar available for those who want to come up to the altar. I'm going to ask Brother Herman if he would please come up and pray for a prayer for us. <coughs> God, truly we're thankful this morning for your goodness and your mercies unto us, Heavenly Father. Thank you again, your God, for allowing us to be in the land of the living, giving our hearts and minds and souls to you, Heavenly Father, your God, that we might be profitable to your kingdom, Heavenly Father. Help us down in our souls, Heavenly Father, dear God, to give our all in this, Heavenly Father. Not holding back on anything, Heavenly yeah. Father, we must, Heavenly Father, be abandoned to God, Heavenly Father. And God alone, you must be, Heavenly Father, Lord God, truly ruling our lives, Heavenly Father. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we all be mindful of that, Heavenly Father. Dear God, as Brother Lee was bringing out on Friday, Heavenly Father, we need the Holy Spirit of God, Heavenly Father. In these last and evil days, Heavenly Father, dear God, much talk, much speaking, but Lord God, the Holy Spirit of God must be demonstrated in our lives, Heavenly Father, if we're to make a difference to this world, Heavenly Father, dear God, help us in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, not to be satisfied, Heavenly Father, with a form of godliness, Heavenly Father, denying the power therein that God has given us, Heavenly Father, help us, Heavenly Father, to take this battle, Heavenly Father, dear God, the kingdom of God has suffered violence down through the years, Heavenly Father, and the violent take it by force, Heavenly Father. Father, there is no other way, Heavenly Father, dear God, that we can be pleasing in your sight, Heavenly Father. We must be willing to fight. We must, Heavenly Father, fight the fight of faith until life on earth is done, Heavenly Father. Help us to die the death of the righteous, Heavenly Father, that our end might be as he is, not having our own righteousness, Heavenly Father, but the righteousness of Christ Jesus, Heavenly Father. Help us down in our souls, Heavenly Father. We need you this morning, Heavenly Father. Many are sick in body, Heavenly Father, in mind, dear God. The enemy has distorted them, Heavenly Father, dear God. Take them, Heavenly Father, discombobulated, Heavenly Father. We pray that you put souls back together again, Heavenly Father. You heard that we crush, Heavenly Father, dear God. Brother Rick, Heavenly Father, the gentleman sitting next to him, Heavenly Father. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. You work it all out, Heavenly Father. Father, you know, Heavenly Father, they're ever concerned, they're ever care, Heavenly Father. Speak to the situation, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Remember the man, Scott, Heavenly Father. Have mercy on his soul, Heavenly Father. Speak to his heart, speak to his mind. Let him have no rest, no peace and unrighteousness, Heavenly Father. Thank you for what you've done for Brother Boyer, Heavenly Father, in touching his body, Heavenly Father, even his soul, Heavenly Father. Give him, Heavenly Father, that divine inspiration. Heavenly Father, magnify yourself. You're the child, Heavenly Father. Sister Stacy, Heavenly Father, we pray, Heavenly Father, even as we speak, dear God, you make a way for her to get to her job every single day of this week, Heavenly Father. And beyond that, Heavenly Father, take care of that car, Heavenly Father. We're, Heavenly Father, a people of faith, Heavenly Father. Lord, we can speak it and we can bring it to pass, Heavenly Father, through your power, through your might, Heavenly Father. Our body is the a temple for the Holy Spirit of God, redeemed, cleansed, and sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Our members are instruments of righteousness that yield to God for his service and glory. The devil has no power over us, Heavenly Father. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember Sister Kim. Remember our children, Heavenly Father, her children, all of our children, Heavenly Father. The children, Heavenly Father, dear God, are the salvation of this world, Heavenly Father. Father, help us in the name of Jesus Christ to raise them in fear and admonition to God, Heavenly Father. Bless in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Work out every situation that concerns your people, sister, niece, Heavenly Father, dear God, that grandson, Heavenly Father. Get a hold of that heart. Get a hold of that mind, Heavenly Father. Help them not to play the fool, Heavenly Father. Magnify yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. Dear sister Tucker, we pray you bless her in her body. Bless her in her mind. Bless her in her soul. Thank you for what you did for Sister Linda Gritter.
Heavenly Father, dear God, this long-standing matter, Heavenly Father. You reach down again and touch your body, Heavenly Father. Magnify yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, Sister Kid, Heavenly Father, we want to see you touch that back, Heavenly Father. Make her ever with all, Heavenly Father. Magnify your power. Magnify your might in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Brother Bland's family, Heavenly Father, we pray that you comfort them, Heavenly Father. You see the family members, Heavenly Father, Lord God, the other man, Heavenly Father, going through in his body. We pray that you bless. Remember him and his wife, Heavenly Father, dear God. Remember uh, Brother Josh's wife, Heavenly Father, bringing forth a child very soon. We pray you bless her in her body, Heavenly Father, dear God. In the name of Jesus Christ, remember Sister April in her body. Likewise, dear God, bringing forth a child very soon. We pray you bless her in her body. Bless her in her mind. Bless her in her soul, Heavenly Father. Help in the name of Jesus Christ. We need your help this morning, Heavenly Father. Thank you, I you bless Sister Carla's husband, Heavenly Father, dear God, by her obedience to the laws of God, Heavenly Father. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. You're still, Heavenly Father, helping us, Heavenly Father, showing your power, your might. Remember, Brother Lee, this morning, Heavenly Father, may bring forth the word of God with clarity, Heavenly Father, with power, with authority, Heavenly Father, Lord, that the soul and the heart and the minds of men might be changed, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Remember us, Heavenly Father. All of us, Heavenly Father, are in need, Heavenly Father, of a greater salvation, Heavenly Father, a greater perfection, Heavenly Father. We want to be more for you, Heavenly Father, dear God, obeying, Heavenly Father, in every instance, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Not on sometimes, Heavenly Father, but all the time, walking with God, talking with God, Heavenly Father, that you bless in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Remember, dear sister Lisa and her body, magnify your power, magnify Magnify your might in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember the loss of the Riggins family, Heavenly Father. Speak to their situation, their concerns in the name of Jesus Christ. We're trusting you, looking to you, the author, the finisher of our faith. In Jesus' name, amen.
Verse number yes. seven will begin our reading for this morning's sermon. Psalms 106, verse number seven. Let us begin our reading. He is the Lord our God. Psalms 106, verse seven down through verse number 11. Our fathers understood not the wonders in Egypt. Our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of mercies. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies. But provoked him at the sea. But provoked him at the sea. Even at the Red Sea. Even at the Red Sea. Hold on, hold on. This is David here reflecting not just on his father and father, but the fathers of the nation of Israel, the Jews, the Hebrews. He says, our fathers, this is an historical reflection. He says, our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. They remembered not, they didn't understand the depth of what you did for them. It's always a sad thing when an individual does not understand the depth of the workings of God, God. What God does, what God do for you. When you just say, oh, God did this. If you really understood what he really had to do for you just to have that right there, my God, you would give it a little more glory, a little more praise, and a little more gratitude. You say, oh, he woke me up this morning. If you knew how he had to put lung, your lung, air in your lungs and he had to talk your nervous system, my God, let you go to sleep and keep death back, my God. Oh, he brought my child home from school. If you knew, my God, when the teacher, that atheist teacher, tried to confuse your child and tell him, the Bible wasn't real, and that gay teacher tried to let him know that it's okay to be gay, and all these other spirits on the bus, my God, that molested and tried to get to your child. You just said, thank God for bringing my child home. If you only knew what God did when he brought your child home, when he did that, you said, my boy, my son, went out with his friend. If you only knew, one of his friends was packing heat. Some boys was looking after him. One of them introduced him to weed, but that weed that had, had crack cocaine laced in, but God protected you and didn't let him get high that night. Didn't let him get in that drunk car, my God. When they went out with their boy, thank God for bringing my son home. You don't understand. There was a drunk driver that night that tried to take your child out, but God took an angel and drove around that drunk driver to bring your child home. You got to understand the depth of God. You gotta, there's no small thing with God. There's no minimum thing with God. The deep things of God, sometimes we don't understand. So here he said, our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. Do you understand Egypt? The bondage, strongest nation at the then known world at the time, children of Israel were bound down in Egypt. Joseph went down, had favor, another king arose to do not Joseph. There were so many of the Hebrews down there. They said, if you let them go, they're going to take over. So they put them in bondage. Hard taskmasters, slavery, but God kept them alive, but God didn't let them, my God, deal with them too strongly. God didn't let them, sometimes we got to thank God. 
God, amen, for what he did for us before we got saved. Okay. Oh, we should be cracked out, amen. We should have AIDS, my God. We should have herpes, my God. We should have babies all over America, amen. We should be in some crazy house this morning, but God, amen. God had mercy, didn't let us die. Some of us should be in hell this morning. We should have already checked in hell, my God, this morning, but God had mercy upon our souls. So here he said, our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt, all that he did for them. They remembered not the multitude of thy verses. Didn't let them, our taskmasters, go to our, see, you, you didn't, my God, you didn't, forgot the, forgot the lice, the frogs, my God, all the plagues that he did, my God, the Pharaoh. Y'all you, couldn't deal with Pharaoh. So God said, I had to deal with Pharaoh. And let me get ahead of myself. Y'all couldn't deal with Pharaoh, the devil. Amen. You needed someone stronger than the devil, my God. Amen. You can say all the help. Uh, I'm going I'm to quit smoking. I'm going to AA. I'm going to a counselor to deal with my uh, depression. Uh, listen, my God, go to all you want to go to, my God. You can't deal with Pharaoh. And if you're not saved this morning, you can't deal with Pharaoh. So here it said, they remember not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even the Red Sea. Let me just say this. If you don't keep remembering what God did, you're going to end up provoking him at the Red Sea. Here they are, murmuring, complaining. Oh, here's the sea is in front of them. Oh, you brought us out here to die. Now they're going to come. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. See? You didn't properly appreciate what I did for you back here. Yeah. You didn't really properly appreciate, my God, the deliverance that I already had given you, the grace that I already sustained you with. You should have been overwhelmed, but, but, but my God, the, the, you don't understand the mercy I gave you. Many times individuals, amen, struggle with the, what they're dealing with today because they don't thank God enough for what he already did. You didn't thank God for the things he already did. Thank you. And let me tell you this, this is a faith builder. Sometimes when you're dealing with something deep, you need to thank God for not just the deliverance, but for the grace. Sometimes that will cause a shout before you even get your deliverance, and it will inspire your faith to receive your deliverance. Sometimes the grace was as much of a miracle. The fact that you didn't die like that, the fact that you're still saved, the fact that it didn't take you out, the fact that by the pain did not overwhelm you, what you were dealing with, and when I haven't delivered you and healed you yet, but the fact that I was your penicillin, I was your pain killer, I was your negative, I was your volume, I was my God. Here he said, here he said, in Egypt, he said, but provoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. Lord, you brought me here to die. But he said, nevertheless, come on, read. He saved him uh -huh. for his name's sake. But God had mercy and saved him for his name's sake. Come on, read. That he might make his mighty power. That he might make his mighty power to be known. To be known. He rebuked the Red Sea also. He rebuked the Red Sea also. And it was dried up. And it was dried up. So he led them through the depth. Hold on. We have to understand the power of this. And I'm going to come back to it. We're going to work our way there. We're talking about the power of God. It said he rebuked the Red Sea. And it was dried up. Do you know how many gallons of water? He didn't say he rebuked the red uh, uh, stream. It, 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 it makes me it makes me so funny somehow. I see like Sunday school exhibits and different individuals say things in regards to the Red Sea. The Red Sea wasn't a river. My God, my Lord, Amen. Amen. Do you know what it takes? If it's only so big, they would have called it a lake. My God, this was massive. My Lord. This was a tremendous undertaking. But the devil always want to mark. How many times have you been in a Sunday school class and you see, oh, the Red Sea? It's like some old thing that he just stepped over. <laughs> the Red Sea. Don't marginalize what God did. It was a sea. The Red Sea. Said he rebuked the Red Sea. Spoke to it. Set it in order. According to what he wanted it to do. 
and it was dried up. Come on and read. He rebuked the Red Sea. He rebuked the Red Sea. And it was dried up. Thank God he rebuked the Red Sea in our life. Amen. 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 Thank God it was dried up. Come on and read. So he led them through the depths. So he led them through the depths. As through the wilderness. Now, mind you, you have to understand again, Lord, help us. Talk about how deep the Red Sea is, Lord, a thousand feet deep. You make these little, these little drawings. It was like, it was a little stream right. that the water just came, came aside, and they just walked on. Man, it was right. all down, this, that, and the other. And it was dried up. Do you know where water sits? The, 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 the ground up under it becomes saturated with moisture. So even if the water had left, amen, they wouldn't have been able to move too quickly because it wasn't dry ground. But he didn't just remove the water. My God, he dried up the land because they had to go quick because Pharaoh was behind them. Oh, you better thank God. You better understand when God does something that's so deep that we can't hardly comprehend what he did to you, my God. You may be sick and you're saved right now. That's a miracle. You don't understand the things in your life that God had to frustrate to cause, my God. The things that was bringing you joy, God took the joy out of it. My God, you weren't having fun going to the club no more. You weren't having fun getting high no more. God had to break up some relationship. That boy, that girl, he had to mess up your finances. Had to cause some conditions in your body. That was all mercy. God had to do all that. He had to take your mind and let you see the beauty of salvation. You thought it was a bunch of do's and don'ts, but he had to show you. My God, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I come and say, my have life. I'll replace. Whatever you give up, I'll replace. God had to do an altar work before you came to church to do an altar work at home. Oh, 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 take your mind. Turn your mind around. The way you thought about being saved, he had to turn that around. He had to cause your life to be all messed up. Why? Because you wouldn't have come if it was all together. That was God. God did all of that oh, just to get you in. Then he had to send the right oh, message with the right song to deal with you the right way. Set you next to the right person. Give me inspiration to go down to the altar. Rebuke my God fear. Rebuke pride. He has to let you go. Hold back the force of the darkness. Hold back sin. Hold back spirit. Hold back
call from guy to guy. Yeah. Going week to week. And, let, and, 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 and this is the thing. Look at that parent right there. That parent has almost raised their children. It's almost too late. Their children have seen them get high, seen them fighting, seen them abused, oh, have all types of people in the house. Look at that, my God. Those children have seen all that. But they could have been taking their child to Sunday school. Right. Their children could have been saved. They children could have seen a church of God home, a biblical home, a beautiful home, a, a, a mom and a dad. But look, my God. and then let me show you something real deep. That's only on the outside. Yeah. Let me show you on the inside. Uh. Look how many times she thought about committing suicide. My God. Oh, my. Look how he's dealing with depression because he wasted his 20s. Yeah. He, they say that he don't like his children. He wasn't there. Why weren't you there on graduate? Why weren't you there when I rode the bike the first time? Why weren't you there on the birthday? You said you was coming. Why didn't you show up at school when I was doing? Why you, why, why, why was you a half hour? You was only there part of the time. You was there, oh, because you hate me. No, 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 no. It wasn't because he hated you. It was because what I caused him. He was so ashamed. He, 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 he was so ashamed of himself. He couldn't keep his own quiet. He felt bad about the, what he couldn't do for you. He felt bad. And, 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 and that just compiled. That just compiled. So he stopped coming around. He turned to drug. Now, now he really don't even want to live. But let me show you something deeper than that. And each one of them is still faithful to the one that calls it up. And that was a bad pill. He's a bad pill. He sit back look at it. Look, look, look. They go for hope. Jesus said, come unto me all your labor. Just come. I got you. I got a life for you. I'll forgive everything you've ever done wrong. As far as the east is from the west. I'll break every habit, every spirit. I will give you a life you've never. I got you. Just come. Just come. Just come. The devil sits back and laughs. They ain't going nowhere. They ain't going nowhere. The worse I am to them, the better they are to me. My God. They ain't going nowhere. He's not the father he should be. He knows he needs help from God. But he loves me too much. Oh Devil, but you're so bad at him. You understand Pimp? Pimp said, don't ever, don't, don't give her no compliments. Right. Don't give her nothing. The worse you treat her, the better she's gonna treat you. Make her fear you. That's what you do. Don't give her no, don't, don't, don't say nothing to her. Let her know this. And folk are sitting there the same way with the devil. He ain't never just a pimp type person. Just sitting there. But this morning. By the help of God, my God, we're endeavoring to Hello. expose him Amen. Yes. for who he is. My God, yes. also show you one element that we're going to focus on today on the power of God today. Come on, read my friend. Amen. And he saved them from the hand of him that hated them. Thank you, Lord, for saving me from the hand Amen. of him. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on. And redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. Thank you, Lord, for redemption. Come on, read. And the waters covered their enemies. And the waters covered them. So when they came through the Red Sea. See, every piece of it is so powerful. When they came through, he led them there, pillar of fire, but now they got to the Red Sea. When he led them through the Red Sea at the right time. See, sometimes God has to wait. You think God ain't your God. He knows what he's doing. He knows, he knows the right time. So he opens the Red Sea. Brother Tim took the children. We were able to go down to the Bible Museum the other day down in Ohio. And when we went through one part of it, it had this the Red Sea scene. This huge mountain of water. Just stop right there. Stop right there. And it was like the out. They just walked right down the middle of it on dry land. Yeah. It said here that they all came through. Say it was the size of this sanctuary here from that door to up here. When they all came through, they all came out. And when they all got out, Pharaoh and his army had caught up with them. They were in hot pursuit. He allowed them, had them wait until Pharaoh got right where he needed them to be. Then he brought them all through the children of Israel. Once Pharaoh got, began to come right behind them, the water stayed up. He didn't let them, as soon as they came up, the water shut. No, 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 no. He allowed the water to stay up until they came all the way out, and they stayed up. Until Pharaoh and his army got into the water, seen the dry ground, they came all the way up, all the way. And right before the first one was able to make it out, and right when the last one put his foot in, God stepped back and rebuked it again and brought it down. And every single member of Pharaoh's army was drowned. If, 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 if a handful had made it out, if God had just, just spoke too quick, too, uh, uh, too slowly, and a handful of them had made it out, they were warriors. They had weapons of war. They would 
them destroyed. That, that, just a handful of them would have taken them back captive. So God didn't let a single one of them, not a single one of them that remained alive once God dealt with them. This morning, we want to bring out none left. My God. My Lord. The Egyptians was all dead. None left. Pray for us this morning, Jesus. There are types and shadows. Like right here, I can see my head right there. Somebody said, Brother John, you can see my head right there on that shadow. Okay. So, so, so my shadow is going before me. That's not really me. I'm right here. But this, my shadow, that hand, that's not really my hand. This is the real hand. Well, the Bible is broken down Old Testament, New Testament. Well, there's two reasons, basically, for the Old Testament primary. They, they, they're a type of an anti-type or the real thing in the New Testament. I'm going to break all this down. And there's a little bit of time that we have to pray for us tonight. Okay. And then we're given examples so we can get inspiration and direction on how we should live our life through examples in the Old Testament. Okay, to give you an example of type. Well, the tabernacle in which Moses was to build, it was a type of the church. Okay? Well, the things in it were types of Christ. You say, Brother Lee, break that down. When you walked into the tabernacle, there was a lamp over here, candle, etc. So the lamp over there, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. That was a type showing you. That Christ was going to be the real light. There was a table over here with bread on it called showbread. Well, that bread really, the priest would eat it, so on and so forth, minister it. Well, that bread, Jesus said, I am the bread of bread life. Of life. Yes. That was Jesus. The, 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 the lava before you came in, the Bible speaks about where they would preach the wasp, just set me up before they went in and minister the grace. The Bible speaks about Washing of regeneration by the word. Right. You say, really, that's the word. That's not Jesus. Well, Jesus said, I am, I am the word. <laughs> the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. All right. Well, before you got to the lava, there was an altar there. And the brace on the altar was a sacrifice, a lamb. Well, you say, really, that was a lamb. How was that a type? When John the Baptist saw Jesus coming, yes, he said, oh, glory oh, to God. the Lamb God. of the God, which shall take away the sins. The Thank Lamb you. took away yes. the sins, but Jesus was the real Lamb yes. that shall deliver from all sin. Yes. Well, Moses led them through type of Christ. Amen. Christ leads us. Aaron, priesthood, type of Christ. Jesus is our high priest. Are you following me? Yes, well, here we go. Bring it, up. it said, Egypt, go over to Exodus chapter 1, was a type of bondage. Exodus chapter 1. Like I told you before, we are a Bible-believing church. Everything we proclaim Backed up by the Bible. So let's look into, come on. So Egypt was a type of bondage. Come on. 13. Egypt was bondage. Come on, read. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. The Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor. Come on. And they made their lives bitter. And that's what sin to do. Sin to make your life bitter. Sin to make your life bitter. Make you serve with rigor. It starts out fun getting high. Right. But keep getting high. Keep getting high. Oh, the bondage of it. Come on and read. And they make their lives bitter with hard bondage. With hard bondage. Come on and read. In mortar and in brick. Uh-huh. And in all manner of service in the field. Uh-huh. All their servants. Within, they make them serve with, with rigor. So Egypt was bondage which was a type of sin. Yes. Sin will keep you bound up. So they were in Egypt, and they were desiring, go to chapter 2 now, read verse 23. They were looking for a deliverer. So down in Egypt, they were bound up, looking for a deliverer. Come on and read. And it came to pass in the process of time uh -huh. that the king of Egypt 
die. Yes. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. Uh -huh. And they cried. And their cry came up unto God by reason of bondage. So here, they cried out to God. We pray somebody cried out this morning, said, Lord, give me about this bondage. Yeah. Lord, I'm down here in this bondage, my God. When we first got to Israel, Egypt, it was okay. But now, Lord, hey, Lord, deliver me out of this bondage. Lord, I don't want to be this way no more. Lord, I don't want to be bound by this stuff no more. Lord, I'm sick and tired of going to bed sick and tired. I'm going to bed a week by week. My life is still, my God, just so unfulfilling. No pleasure. No real peace. I got problems. I got spirits. I got habits. I got things. Lord, I'm tired, Lord. They were tired of it. And sin will make you tired. But that's a good thing. My God, when you get tired, now you can get some help. But as long as you're not tired, you won't be broken in contract, my God, with godly sorrow. But if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, don't let false religion, my God, confuse you. And I'm going to get to that, my God. Going to church, my God, is no cloak. There's no deliverance, my God, for sin, my God. You must be delivered from it. When you go home, you want to be free, my God. You want your conscience clear. You don't want to be afraid to die. You don't want to read the Bible but don't see your life lived in it. You don't want to have a form of godliness but no power to back up that life. My God, you get tired of just being tired of sick and tired. Some folk are tired of sin. Some folk are bound but going to church. They're tired, my God. They really want to serve God for real. Well, God sent you to the right place this morning. We're going to give you the formula on how to be delivered. Go to chapter 6, verse number 6, my God. Come on and read. Wherefore, yes, sir. say unto the children of Israel, yes. I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I am the Lord, I will bring you out Thank from God. the burdens of the Egyptians. Thank God. Come on and read. And I will rid you out of their bondage. Come on. And I will Hold on, hold on. I will bring you out under the burdens of Egypt, of the Egyptians. Come on, my God, read. And I will redeem you with a stretched out arm. And I will redeem you with a stretched out arm. I don't care how deep you are in that. I will stretch out my arm. My God, I don't care. People may judge you. People may talk about you. People may go. People may move seats if they really know what you was bound by. If they really know the things that you were involved in. God said, I won't judge you. I'll stretch out. I'll roll up my sleeve. I'll stretch out my arms. Amen. I'm willing to get my arm dirty to bring you out. I'm willing to bring my that arm down in the mud of sin. The miry clay. Amen. The habits. I'll go into the crack house. I'll go into the dope house. I'll go into the prostitute. It doesn't matter. Or I'll go into the lying house. I'll go into the bitter house. I'll go into the gluttony. It doesn't matter what you're bound by. I will stretch out my arm. He stretched out his arm and brought them through. And he delivered them. And he redeemed them. Amen. Come on, read, brother. I will redeem you with a stretched out arm. Uh -huh. And with great judgment. And with great judgments. And I will take you to me. Let God, let, God put, let God put judgment on the devil this morning. Amen. Let God put judgment Amen. on the devil this morning. He put judgment on Satan in our lives. Yes. All right. Yes. So now we have, they were in Egypt. They were bound. They were tired. They cried out to God. You cannot get help unless you cry out to God. Right. Amen. You can't work yourself That's out of a situation right. that you got yourself in. Right. Come on. Sin got you in the situation. Yes. You need something greater. So when you cry out to God, God delivers. John chapter 8, verse number 32. Pray for us, saints. Pray for us. None left. Not one of the Egyptians made it out. None left. All the Egyptians died today in the Red Sea. As a type, there must be an anti-type. I want to be in the place and I want to be in the church in which the full promises of God are yet available today. Amen. Where you see a type, if you're a part of God's church, you should receive the blessing of the anti-type. I don't want to see the heavenly manna being given to them every day that satisfied them, that gave them the nutrition to help them go another day. But the word that I'm receiving don't give me enough nutrition to keep me with victory down through the day. I got to fall down and I got to get back up. Well, you need to, when they ate the heavenly manna that God gave, they were able to continue on throughout the wilderness to walk a day's journey. Well, if you, amen, really eat the word of God, thank God for the saved experience, that word will sustain you.
you when you're going through the day and that boss come against you and that pretty girl try to flirt with you, my God, but that word can sustain you. Well, here it said that the Egyptians, all of them died that day. Those Egyptians represented sin, represented spirits, represented addictions, represented habits. Not one of them made it out. Well, today we're living in a Christian world today in which they say after you come and get saved, you still got to be bound by this. You got to be bound by that. You can't help but smoke. You can't. Well, my Bible said that none of them made it through. Once you really get saved, amen, if you understand the blessings of the power of God, if you understand the blessings that are available to us today, you don't have to settle for that this morning. It doesn't matter what you're bound by. It doesn't matter how long you've been bound by it. Amen. Don't let a false prophet tell you after you get saved, you still got a lust. You still got a cuss. You still got all those Egyptians died that day. And when you really come to the truth, they can die this morning. It doesn't matter how strong they are. It doesn't matter how deep my God they try to hold on. My God, when the blood of Jesus comes, what shall wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Every Egyptian, every heaven, every spirit, you can be delivered this morning. You don't got to stay bound by nothing. We rebuke the devil this morning. God is able to do what he did for the Israelites back then. He can do it spiritually. Amen. Come on, Rick. And you shall know the truth. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall be. How do I know if I'm in truth? How do I know if I'm a, I don't believe that way no more. I okay, I, if you don't believe that way no more, tell me the way you believe. And at the end of the day, we're going to have a truth test. Whatever you believe in, Jesus had a truth test. These came and they said, we're religious. We go to church. We ain't bound by nothing. You don't know what your bishop so and so, my bishop. I go to New Ebenezer, back blah, 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 blah. I, do the, I go to the waterfall. I do this and that. Jesus said, I appreciate all of that. But we're going to have a truth test. They said, Abraham is my great, 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 grandfather. Don't you know I go to the temple every Saturday. I go through the law. I read. I'm in the praise team. Jesus, I appreciate all that. After you get done reading the law, after you get done coming up out of the temple, after you get done off the praise team, after you get done with your Daniel fast, after you get done with all of that, are you bound? Oh, we're going to preach the church of God. Is there still spirits in your life? Is there still attitudes you just gotta have? Is there still hatred and envy, my God? Is there still things you involved in that some preacher told you that you can never get free of? Well, tell that preacher you wouldn't hurt a church of God message. Right. That message said all Egyptians can die today. None of them have to remain. I'm gonna show you through the word of God that no matter what you're bound by, no matter what spirits or habits, my God, you might be dealing with whom the sun. Church of God preacher. 
He said, I'm not playing no games with yes, you. Glory. He wasn't trying to build no yes. mega church. He's trying to get souls ready for heaven. Yes. That's what we do, amen. amen. We're not trying to, no, no, no. We want souls that are able to be lights to this world here in amen. Jackson. Amen. You cannot be a light after you leave this sanctuary if you're still doing what Jackson do. Right. How are you going to be a light? How are you going to tell me, you know you need to quit cutting up. You need to quit cutting up. Amen. You know you need to quit lusting. You lust? Yeah. Well, how are you going to? Why would I ever want any preacher to get up telling me, I'm a sinner? If you sin, I'm bound by sin. How are you going to help me? Right. Darkness can't cast out darkness. Yeah. Right. Sin can't cast out sin. That's why the Bible said Babylon has become the habitation. Why? Because the doctrine they teach keep you bound in. As long as you abide by that doctrine, you're going to stay bound by sin. But thank God this morning you can take a stand. Break free of that. Say, I want some help. I want to be delivered. Come on, let's see what Jesus said. Come on, read. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed. Hold on, you said, brother Lee, give me the type. You talk about Babylon, give me the type. You talk about types in the Old Testament. Okay, let me take you back. The root word for Babel, Babel. Yeah. Right. Bad, bad, babe. Well, I'm going to get to that. Bad, bad, bad. What happened? What was, what was the root of Babel? Confusion. Here they came, and they said, we going to create our own way to heaven. Right. I ain't got to follow your way, God. I don't got to follow this book. We're going to start our own church. Our own denomination. In our church, you can wear whatever you want to wear, do whatever you want to do, smoke whatever you want to smoke, sleep. If you ain't married, y'all can still have sex. You good. You good just kneel at nighttime. Oh, yeah. Look how damning that is. So you mean to tell me you can never really be free? I got to stay bound for all my life. I got to stay. I can never have victory in my soul. I can never have freedom. How can I tell my children to serve as Jesus if they see something other than Jesus in me at home? I can pray all I want. Lord, bless my children. Lord, bless my friends. I'm standing in their own way. My behavior and my lifestyle and some spirits that I had that I got from great grandma Susie, I get attitudes every time I go off. They heard me go off, cuss somebody out, and then I'm going to get down and pray. We got children that want to be free, but they're dealing with parents that still got Egyptians. They still got parents that still firing up, talking about you need to be saved. You need to be saved and delivered. God is saying today that there's still a message out there that none have to remain. None have to remain. Jesus said, what were the frank to respond once they told him that we go to church? Come on, read. Jesus answered them. Yes. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Yes. Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Whosoever committed sin. Yeah. You're bound by it. You can't halfway serve the devil. They weren't halfway in Egypt. Come on, come on. Jesus is saying this morning. But what Frank gave him a solution. He made it clear. He said, I don't care what church you go to. And saints, you got to get that down in you. Children, listen up. When you go to be, when you go older and you go away to college like I did, and I get into my room up there on campus, and my roommate's telling me, we go to church, we say, and I go to their grandfather's church in Saginaw, he trying to put us all up on the stage, telling them, oh, yeah, these men, this, that, and the other. I sat there and said, whoa, 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 I'm not going up there. I'm not saved. They said, no, 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 your father, when you grew up in the church, you saved, you saved. I said, bro, I'm not saved, and you ain't saved. You live with me, bro. You live to know truth. I'm sitting here, I thought the whole world knew you can't serve two masters. I thought the whole world knew you can't be saved on Sunday doing whatever you want to do. You're saved or you're not. You ain't kind of saved. My wife can never. She had her 10th child a couple years back. She had her 10th baby a couple years back. She got pregnant several times. Stair stepper. She was never kind of pregnant. Never ever, but Johnny, was she kind of pregnant. Either she was pregnant or she wasn't pregnant. Either you saved or you're not saved. And when somebody says, I'm saved, I'm saved, ask them the next question. What are you saved from? Mm. Right. Well, uh, 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 I'm saved uh, from, uh, uh, I can't say. Matthew 121 over there, it says, she shall bring forth the son, thou shalt call his name Jesus. What's Jesus' purpose for coming? <laughs> he shall save his people from their sin. No other faith on earth can declare that. Sin is the issue. The Muslims, the Hindu, the Church of Scientology, the Buddhists, none of them, the Catholic, none of them can declare that their prophet their can save you from sin. Only Jesus. But what the devil did was he penetrated Christianity. Now we got the majority of them saying, guess what? Jesus can't save from sin. Uh, the Egyptians got to remain. But this morning, if there's 
there's a deliverance that's needed. Obadiah 17. As we close it out. Come on. Pray for us, saints. Singers and get ready. If there are any Egyptians. Praise come on God. Up. Yes. Obadiah. Obadiah. It's a small little book. Brother Obadiah. One chapter. Upon Mount Zion. But upon Mount Zion. Yes. Thank God. In Hebrews, he said, you went to Sinai. Old Testament. But here you come unto Mount Zion. New Testament. He said, upon Mount Zion. Shall be delivered. Shall be delivered. Every Egyptian. Beyond black. Every message that he proclaimed in Obadiah 17, chapter 1, verse 17. He said, upon Mount Zion shall be delivered. Every message that God proclaims. None left. Paul said, I'm going to get sanctified. He said, for I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I dealt with the Egyptians. After I came out of, after they came out of the Red Sea, they were in the wilderness to lead them on, crossing the Canaan, Jordan River, into Canaan, which represents sanctification. He says, I dealt with the Egyptians. But, he said, I am crucified with Christ in Galatians 2.20. Don't go there. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. He said, I am crucified. What crucifixion? He said, yet I live. If you crucified, then you die. Jesus was crucified. He was put in the grave. He was dead. What are you talking about, Paul? For I am crucified. You're dead. No, none of you was up. What Over in Romans 6, <coughs> it said, for an old man being crucified. None left. That's the message of the church of God, of the word of God. In sin, none left. In sanctification, none of the old men is left. My God. In sin, you're not going to see me ever cursing nobody out again. That's dead. You're not going to ever see me getting out. You're never going to see me lusting after the you don't get No more pornography. None left. I got saved. I got saved, brother. I got saved. God delivered me. No, that's, the that's why you have a testimony service in Mount Zion. I thank God God delivered me. Now, now you don't do no half job. He delivered me from all sin. Then I went on and I got sanctified. Consecrated all that I am and hope to be. I laid on an altar. I wasn't even saved for just, a, I think, a couple months or whatever it was the message came for. You didn't need a waiting list. You didn't have me saved no 20 years. But I knew that if I didn't go on, some of the old me, my old desires, I wanted to go to the league. But I didn't care if I'd be trying to take my same self to uh, my uh, uh, worldly pursuits. That was le uh, that's me. I'm the man. I, I dealt with the girl. I dealt with the girl. I dealt with going to the club. I dealt with that. But there was a self that I had to deal with. That old man, there was a little bit left of me. If you don't die to self, you leave a little. It shouldn't be none left. That's the best. None left. What's the church of God meant? None left. Talk about me. Talk me out. Wife, don't understand me. Say this. I will not go off on you. I won't call you out your name. I won't raise my voice at you. I'm not going to slam the door at you. I'm not going to dog you up. It's no, none left. I might cry. I might get going to pray. But I'll never do you wrong. Children, you'll never see me go off on mommy. You'll never hear me raise my voice at her. You'll never hear me my God dog you up. I won't dog you up. I might set you in order. But I'm going to do it in the spirit. That's the message. None left. I can go cook in the kitchen, or I can go to the trustee's office, or I can go in and sing in the choir. You might not sing my song. You might not cook the food like I like. You might not give me the money that I asked you for for my rent. But I'm going to let you know, when we get done with that meeting in the kitchen, when we get done with that meeting in the trustee room, when we get done with that meeting in the choir, you don't slack my song. I don't care. There's none left. That's the church of God. That's power. That's glory. Factions over here, factions over there. You dog me up, so I'm gonna find a way to get back at you. Yeah. No! Yeah. None left! Praise None God. left! None left! Glory if we're in sin, we can sense, my God, that there's a little bit left. This morning, we gotta go to the altar and say, Lord, I want all the Egyptians dead in my life. Lord, I want all self dead in my life. Even afterwards, when Samuel told Saul, he said, Go and deal with that issue. Hey, yeah, go deal with it. Go deal with them and don't bring nothing left. He went 
down there, he gonna take him and just a few things and a few good sheep and a few things and leave it alive. Mm. Samuel came back a prophet. Right. He said, hold on, what's this I'm here? Church of God, man, what's this I'm here? I told you to deal with that issue. Amen. This had nothing to do with salvation. It had nothing to do with sanctification. This was the issue you were dealing with. The issue with you and her. I told you, deal with it. Go into that prayer room. I told you, get on your face before God. Fast and pray. Pray until you love her. Pray until you can receive her. Pray until you can receive him. Pray until that thing is gone. Pray. Don't pray until you get a little relief. Pray until you don't feel nothing that you feel towards her. Pray until it's all gone. The prophet came back after he told him to deal with all of it. He came back. He said, what's that here? I still hear the... Yeah. Hold on, hold on, what's I'm hearing, my God? That issue that you had, that old lust spirit that you had, oh, my God, I still hear bad, bad. That deliverance you. that you needed, my God, in your home, that issue that y'all needed to reconcile with, I, bad, bad. No, I told you to deal with it. It shouldn't be none left. After you get saved and sanctified, you're going to go through some things. You're going to be mistreated. You're going to have differences. There's some things that you will have to pray through, but you got to get before God until there's none left. I know, brother, I love you. I appreciate you. I'm not going to say, okay, this issue, but I still don't want nothing to do with you. You don't, you. I, I, no, 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 no. What's that I hear? What's that I hear? Yes. How are we going to win a world? He said, by this shall you know that all yes. men still know that you're my yes. disciples indeed, that you have love one to another. What you have for her is not full love. It's fame love. You tolerate her. What's that I hear? It should be none left. I don't care if she did your mother wrong back in 1984. You got to get before God. Deal with it that you can break that generational difference. Some generational, my God, don't even like each other. Some families for generations, my God. But God is asking you, step up. Deal with that issue. Yes. yes, she was molested, my God. Yes, he did you wrong. But you get on your face before God. Don't you take that baggage which you all feel at your life. Every relationship you ever go to, you're going to take that baggage if any remains. God is saying, the church of God's message, none left. Egypt, none left. I'm sanctified. None left. God touched stuff in my life that I got to deal with. I will stay. I will get the keys to the church. Stay there all night long. Until God gives me a witness. That issue I need that victory over. That relationship. There's none left. When that's the case. When that's the power. When that's in place. You're talking about a power. You're talking with Sister Tucker. Get up. Oh, she's not my. Oh, you whatever, my God. You're talking about some power. You're talking about some glory. You're talking about some deliverances, some healings, my God. But we must proclaim and demonstrate the message. None left. God bless us. Singers may come. If there's any that need prayer this morning, you come forward and pray. God has something special for the church. Don't look at your neighbor. Don't look at a visitor. This was your message. Shall we stand? Everybody in the building, please stand with your feet. Please come forward. Those that need help. Those that come pray. Those that God has spoken to. The altar is open. The prayer room is open. God is just saying this morning, none left. Search me, Lord. Is there any Egyptians left? After they crossed the Red Sea, they went through the wilderness. Going into Canaan. My God. No self left, Lord. I want to use you. God wants to use every one of us to his apex. But something we can't do. He said there's a little bit left in that marriage, in that home. There's a little bit left. You can call it another name this morning. Let's be real. Let's be transparent. Let's be humble. Is there any that need to pray this morning? If you want to be saved, come forward. If you want to be saved this morning, I need some my deliverance. God, my God. I need you delivered. You don't have to keep yourself saved. God will deliver. You just need to surrender. Is there anybody this morning that need help that God spoke to and said there's something alive? Maybe it's an Egyptian. Maybe it's self. Maybe it's that issue that you're dealing with. Been dealing with it for months, maybe years. But it's still there. Pray, read, shout. It's still there. God is saying this morning, 
There's deliverance. There's a balm in Gilead. Upon Mount Zion, there's deliverance. Lord, I need to be delivered from this issue. I need deliverance this morning. I don't want to see it again. I don't want to keep holding it down. I don't want to feel this way no more. Lord, I need help. I want to serve you freely. I want to feel the joy of my salvation. Lord, I want to freedom in the spirit. Is there anybody else that needs to pray? Come forward. Let me see. None left. What a met, what a word. None left. Amen. What Amen. none left? My God. Not one left. My God. My God. All to Jesus. I'm just letting it all go. I'm just letting some things go I've been struggling with, I've been dealing with. I'm letting self go. Lord, I'm just really, I need it. A real church of God. Sister, that issue that we had, there was a little bit left. I said I like you, but I didn't love you like I should have. I got on my knees that day, that Sunday morning. I just let it go. I surrender. Let me go. I want to be sanctified. I want to be fully sanctified. I got to let self go. I got to let self go this morning. I want to be filled with the Spirit. I want to be fully sanctified. Oh, how do I do it? That's it. I surrender. I'm letting it all go. My hopes, my dreams, myself. I'm done, God. Burn me up this morning. Burn me up, God. Burn me up, God. Purge me, Lord. Anybody else need purging? The fire is here. The fire is here. Listen. All to Jesus.
power of Mount Zion. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for the type and the anti-type. Father, it took mighty power and strategic operations for you to slay every Egyptian. Lord, we're so thankful that we serve a God that is that powerful and that wise. Lord, you know, dear God, in this great audience, if there's any Egyptians that need to be slain, Father, we pray that you inspire faith to believe God. We don't have to settle for any Egyptians in our life whatsoever whom the Son sets free. Help us, Lord. It's free indeed. We believe that word, dear God. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. My Lord, my Lord. Father, dear God, even dear God, going on, dear God, and dealing with self. Lord, none left. Father, dear God, this flesh, my God, this carnality, this old man that some of us have carried around. Father, since we were children, dear God. Father, teach us and show us how, dear God, to climb on that altar. My God, the song poet said, when thy soul the perfect price yes. is made, Amen. God will send the holy fire. Father, help us to surrender all. Father, to let it all go. We want to be filled with your spirit this morning. Father, crucified this morning. Burn up this morning, dear God. Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, if there's anything, dear God, that we're dealing with in our experiences, Father, this morning, dear God, we don't want to toy with it. We don't want to pet it. We need total and complete victory. Help. None of that's left. My God. Any breaches in relationships, Lord, help us to be humble. None left. There's nothing that on my part. As much as lies within you, live peaceably with all men. I have nothing in my heart against you at all. None whatsoever. I had to pray. It hurt. What you did hurt me. It hurt me bad. But I got before God. And God I showed me I was still holding that back. I was still holding. But thank God he delivered me from that. I have a freedom. I have a joy down in my soul. I can pray for you and love you. Thank you for the word, dear God. None left. Have your divine way. Bless every single one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say. Amen.